Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is the NZXT Switch 810 full tower case. This is actually the special edition version. We have previously seen the Switch 810 first at uh, Las Vegas earlier this year, 2012 at CES. And we were very impressed in terms of its features. It's a, what uh, NZXT dubs a hybrid full tower case and that is a very flexible in terms of installing um, just a, either your regular air cooling build or it can accommodate also a triple radiator on the top and a 240 millimeter radiator at the bottom if you can move around certain components. And we have also reviewed the Switch 810 previously, but the new special edition version comes in a matte black and a gunmetal version. This one in particular, the one inside this box, is a gunmetal version. You'll see that the box is similar to the regular Switch 810, uh, but what you need to look for is the sticker on the side that mentions whether what color it is, whether it is matte black or gunmetal. It's actually spelled out, it's on the side. And uh, the original Switch A10 comes in white or black and it was all glossy. So the difference between, of course, the gunmetal is the color and the matte black is that it is not completely shiny. So what we should do, uh, we should just open up the box and take a closer look at the Switch A10 full tower case. That's, we can take a look at all the features that you see here on the box cover. Now we have the NZXT Switch 810 out of the packaging and we can clearly see just how really attractive it is in terms of design and the uh, new gunmetal version actually fits the black trim as well. It looks very attractive. The case itself is made of uh, steel, combination of steel, uh, some synthetics and uh, some mesh airs in there. And But uh, compared to other full tower case, it is surprisingly light in terms of handling. I've uh, reviewed a lot of cases. Uh, this is one of the lightest actually uh, full tower case I have uh, I have reviewed just from handling it and uh, I guess because the the top is made of uh, these uh, these plastic and the front bezel is plastic as well but uh, it all look it all in terms of appearance it flows very well uh, it doesn't look uh, completely uh, separate from each other like from the uh, side panel which is steel in here flowing to the top the paint job is very well done uh, the, you can't you can't even tell that it's plastic on first glance but uh, from the top end at the bottom just it just flows very well in terms of design so let's actually just take a look at all the details one by one starting in the front and eventually going inside the NZXT Switch 810 special edition gunmetal gray color case and uh, let's do that now at the top there is a shutter for the top cover this is actually the cover in there and if you want a quieter computing experience just uh, push it forward but if you want to have higher airflow just push it back and it opens up and if you want to remove it completely you can see it you can just uh, press the left and the right locking mechanism in the rear and you lift it see the plastic cover in there one thing to note is that this is uh, plastic on plastic, so that's why it was a bit, uh, it wasn't as smooth in terms of moving around. Maybe you could put a little bit of grease in there. Uh, a little plumber's grease will actually go a long way if you uh, have this on your system, so you can just move around a little bit smoother, a little less friction. And underneath here, you can find uh, space for a for rather 340 millimeter fans. You can even um, like see routing holes for 120 millimeter fans as well, so 120 and 140, up to three of them. And maybe you have a, uh, a triple radiator underneath and then a, your triple fan set up either in push or pull configuration up on top. Or maybe if you just standard air cooling, you can add additional fans in there just to uh, exhaust air out. The power switch is integrated into the front bezel design and it's located here on the upper left hand side. As for the I.O. ports, it is covered by this dust protector. And you can find a pair of USB 2.0 ports, a pair of USB 3.0 ports, an integrated SD card reader, your microphone and your headphone audio jacks, a reset button, 
and LED on and off switch. This LED on and off switch is actually for the motherboard's rear I.O. so that when you're plugging things at night you don't stumble in there you can just find the proper port that you need to plug something into. A very cool design that is a unique to NZXT and I hope to see it in future designs as well. Although I also would wish that they would put it here in the front. Uh, we'll see it later once we have done our installation whether uh, how the LED at the back looks but I would have also liked uh, for the backing of this to light up once you do the installation. Uh, I'm actually doing a little mod right now on my NZXT H2 because I do a lot of, of uh, peripheral flood plugging at night especially because I, I work late at night and I, uh, I do I do most of my reviews at night and doing typing with the lights turned off so that is a very cool feature to have. There are four five and a quarter inch external drive bays in front of the Switch A10 and the topmost one is actually for your uh, optical audio bezel or your optical drive bezel. See how it's integrated. You don't need to remove the front cover of your uh, optical drive. You just uh, put it on top and it pushes out. Very cool feature to have and the fact that you can move it around uh, depending on which um, five and a quarter inch drive bay cover you want to install it in. And the other ones are plain. These two ones are plain right underneath it. And uh, as you can see that I'm to, in order to remove it, you just simply push it, uh, squeeze it from the left and the right side and then pull it out. And this one at the bottom looks slightly different. Let me just show you. There's a little bit of slit here at the top and the bottom. That is of course to gather airflow since this is actually a hot swap uh, drive here and I think it's locked inside so I can't show you but I can take my camera and uh, take a closer look in there is a um, side of hot swap bay for your 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch hard drive just even markers onto the uh, drive bay itself the lower front area of the Switch 810 is dedicated to drawing in cool air Although it does not look like it since it has a plain design with the exception of this small triangular area at the lower right hand corner with some mesh on it. But uh, if you, as you look closely here on the left and right side there are these uh, areas here where it can actually pull in air. And if you press the NZXT logo right in the middle, the front comes off. I'll just demonstrate what it looks like here. See that air? There's enough air in there to draw in air and there's dust filter right in the middle. Although there's no dust filter in the small mesh area there so there's a little bit of room for dust to come in. But uh, the best part about the integrated uh, dust filter is that you can actually just unscrew it and clean up once of course when uh, airflow becomes very obstructed with all the dust. Just uh, simply unscrew it and wash it out. And behind that you can find a 140 millimeter fan pre-installed. Draw in air can add an additional 140 millimeter fan or you can remove that and install a pair of 120 millimeter fans in their place and here at the bottom there is a dust filter integrated and also tucked in here this is the first time we're looking at it is the switch A10 manual similar to the front cover the bottom uh, dust filter actually locks in and out, same way with the front. Very cool idea. No need for uh, screws, it'll be totally free. Here's the manual, switch A10. Standard NZXT manual, it's a black and white fold out manual. And let's see if it's multilingual, but. Uh, Looks like uh, okay. It is multilingual. Uh, all the covers basically seven languages in here. Illustrated step-by-step -step guide. Just in case you're a uh, beginning system builder. Here at the bottom, we can see why there is a very large dust filter in the back and in the front. That is, of course, because there is a lot of uh, room in there for air to be drawn in. Well that's so you can see underneath of course this entire area is mesh for the power supply intake and underneath 
the front where you can install a 240 millimeter rad and uh, or you can actually just uh, put in a pair of uh, fans in there for to draw in cool air additional cooling and uh, also for elevation you have four feet in here they're rubber yeah, but quite long so they uh they're quite sturdy they're not just the the rounded feet that come with other cases but it's actually elongated it looks very attractive at the bottom and it's also um may not see it from this angle but along the side of the uh the bottom structure there's perforations so draw in more air as well on the left side panel we'll see a very large acrylic side window allows you to view your internal components and the side panel are actually held in place by three thumb screws the two in the middle can easily be removed as a regular thumb screw but the third one is slightly different you can actually keep it uh, you don't need to complete the, the slot you can just loosen it a bit and then push it down there's an integrated mechanism in there that allows you to keep it so I don't uh, just demonstrate how that works and slightly pull the case out although unlike other cases the switch a10 does not have a side uh, side panel handle so it takes a little bit of uh, pulling out well. this, this is a brand new case it takes a little bit of pulling out especially putting at an angle in there it's a bit tight inside see in there Similar to the left side panel, the right side panel uses thumb screws to hold it in place. Although the design is a little bit more plain than the left side, there's no designs at all, in fact. And uh, of course, to remove it, just take out the thumb screws. And the middle can also be adjusted, but uh, if you want, you just completely remove it and use it as a regular thumb screw instead of using the uh, sliding lock that they use. And of course, to pull it out, uh, I noticed that uh, when opening the left side, I, I was wondering why there was no handle. That's why it was, uh, I found it, I found it a little bit hard to pull. But I think uh, they designed it so that you can actually just have to push it outward a bit. Not completely, uh, not like com not like a regular door, but uh, not completely slide it out. But uh, move it to the side of it and then pull out. See, it's much easier doing that than just straightforward pulling it out. That's why they designed without the side handles found in other cases. They won't, they've uh, they made sure that it works that way. And here behind the right side panel, you can see, clearly see the cables that have been pre-routed already. And they're all monochrome. They're black, but uh, also keeps the uh, aesthetics uh, uniform. And here is where you'll put in your hard drives. It's uh, right all the cables in the back. See the um these hard drive uh, caddies are actually i believe they're exactly similar to the uh phantom 410 uh, the hard drive caddies using those as you can see as these uh, toolless locks for the regular 3.5 hard drive but the 2.5 uh drives like sds you just need to uh, use screws to screw in also the difference actually between this and the regular switch a10 is that they have uh, um, I believe when I reviewed the Switch 410, it had the another extra bar here at the bottom, which prevented SSD from being installed. They've removed that now with these in the special edition, so you can actually install your SSDs and plug in uh, the connectors using 90 degree static angled uh, cables. So that is a very uh, good a a development uh, in terms of uh, improvement with the Switch A10, and uh, hopefully with the special edition of the 410 as well. I haven't seen that yet. But uh, most, if they have done it with this, they could probably, uh, as they could probably have made changes with that as well. But of course, until I've seen it, uh, I don't completely know. And here, inside is the accessory bag, at the bottom part of caddy. Let's open it up. See the NZXT logo in there. And uh, I'm trying to find the opening. There we go. I thought it was a flip top safety bag. 
and how much covers it? Do you have, of course, your some zip ties, a whole bag of screws, here you have, these are four screws, so most likely for your power supply. You have another four set of screws, I'm not exactly sure where, we'll consult the manual. Four set of screws for your fan installation. You have a whole bunch of screws in here, most likely for the peripherals for SSD. Long uh, screws, these are for installing the fan. Here you have uh, more, more screws in there. I'm not sure if they're these or these go for to the motherboard. Of course, you have to consult the manual if you want clarity on that. And these are the standoffs. It comes also with that adapter. And finally, this is a we have. If you've probably seen my uh, my custom cable tie, I uh, rather custom. Uh, cable extenders from SXT. I did a review for the uh, starter kit from SXT and it includes one of these. This is an 8 pin um, female to male extender cable for your CPU uh, auxiliary power. Because what usually happens with full tower cases is that they're quite taller than standard mid tower cases and sometimes some power supplies don't have a cable long enough to reach the air for convenience. But I use it anyway, even if I have my power supply, it's just because it is much more convenient to have this. Uh, especially if you have a, a heat sink that covers that 8 pin. You can just leave this permanently in one of your motherboards and just swap your motherboards around all the time. You don't need to take out your, your, your uh, heat sink that covers that air and just plug it in here in the back. It's very convenient. I'm going to demonstrate that later. Once I do my installation, I'm going to pick a heat sink that demonstrates just that. And uh, I think we've covered all the accessories in here. So note that this is braided, not like you, what you will find in a, in other um, in other full tower cases. They bundle they they bundle just the regular uh, the red and rather the yellow and black colored cable. So these are actually part of their premium uh, cable kit that they sell. So that's very nice of NXT to include that in Switch A10. And also here while we're here in the back, let's take a look at the cable routing options. You have see these these are. I haven't seen these in an NZXT case before. Uh, I'm not sure if, uh, I can't recall if the Phantom, the original Phantom had these, but I believe they're different. But uh, these are actually a little bit more rectangular. Um, these are snugly fitting, you can see there. Although this one is a bit loose in front, but this one on top is a bit snug. That's very good. Uh, doesn't move around. Keeps your cables in place and they're also pre routed already. And in here, this is a unique, basically a hub it's a 4-pin Molex hub. Let me just take it out and see. And it's held in place by Velcro. Let's see how strong it is. Oh, I completely removed it. I removed the glue. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I should have... Uh, the Velcro was stronger than the glue they used, so that's, that's weird. But uh, you can easily clean that glue up and replace it with something. Here you go, held in place, and you can see there the 4-pin Molex power, and you can fit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 fans, and powered by a single Molex connector. So, not only does that kind of uh, freeze up some of your Molex connectors for your, from your power supply, it also makes cable organizing much, much simpler. And other than, of course, the cable routing errors, there's plenty of them here, uh, grommeted, and some of them are non-grommeted. Uh, you also have these uh, these loops where you can plug in your zip ties. There's plenty of space there, but I would say about uh, 30 millimeters of space. We'll see later once we do our installation whether there is enough space in here to, uh, for routing all your cables. We'll, we'll use a non modular power supply, of course, to really test it. And we'll see in the back, see our side here now. Let's go back to the left side panel. So I, I think I just opened the left side panel and without looking inside. So we'll take a closer look at that detail before we proceed to the installation. All right, as you can see here, we are back to the main chamber of the NZXT Switch 810, and it is a very busy case internally. First thing we notice is that there's a large CPU cutout here that is a unique design. It's not straightforward square or rectangular in one side, but it actually accommodates the uh, motherboards that have the CPU sitting a little bit higher 
and wants to move it a little bit to the right. It was a very unique design. And as for the uh, motherboard support here etched onto the motherboard uh, plate itself you have support for ATX, Micro ATX, Mini ATX, Flex ATX, SSI CEB, SSI EEB and I believe in the specifications it mentions XL ATX of course we won't confirm and we don't know until we confirm later on our installation video but uh, for now that's what's etched in there and these are pilot guides for installing your motherboard stand as well so it's etched in there so you can uh, keep a handy reference and uh, of course we've already seen the cable routing at the back uh, here you can also see the pre-installed fans you have a 140 here in the rear and a 140 here on top and uh, they're already as we've seen we have they've already connected and pre-routed at the back into the fan connector hub and inside here uh, you have your connectors Take a look at these. These are the for the front I.O. And I like that they're all monochrome so it doesn't uh, clash with the color theme of your system. Here you have uh, HD audio connector which is quite long which as it should be because usually it goes here or either it goes in the middle depending on your motherboard model. Here is a USB 2.0 header and a reset switch header. And the reset switch is separate from the other, this entire ribbon here with the power switch, power LED, and hard drive LED headers. And let's take a look at this. This is your 20 pin USB 3.0 header. See, it's quite a thick cable. It's flat, it's not uh, rounded. And uh, this is we're seeing the USB 2.0 header, another USB 2.0 header. This why are there two? I believe, oh, okay, this one is for your standard USB 2.0 headers. That's why there's uh, two wires coming to it. This single one is for, I'm assuming, the card reader, the data for the card reader. And uh, this is a set of power. Is it, it's probably powering the, um, I'm not sure if it's powering the LED or some LEDs or it's power, uh, well, the LEDs have their connectors in there, but I'm assuming uh, uh, either powers on the LED here in the rear and it also powers the card reader. Standard, uh, I actually like that they use SATA instead of Molex connector because sometimes Molex uh, can be, uh, most power supplies don't really, new power, newer power, supply, power supplies don't have uh, Molex connectors anymore and Molex connectors aren't that uh, tight fitting so I actually like uh, SATA connectors since they're, they're lockable. I'm not sure this one's this one locks but, well, actually no, this one isn't but there it is in a SATA connector. It's much more sleeker looking. Although the cable is quite thin here, looks like a two cable connector. And uh, see here, oh, this one we've seen this design before, and these as actually Phantom 410. See, they can uh, there's a pre-installed 140 in here. You can also fit a 120, and you can slide it up and down, and uh, provide uh, uh, cooling into the GPU or you can angle it upwards to help uh, drive uh, cool air from the front into the uh, CPU. And here at the bottom as well, you have that, but there's no fan pre installed. And the best thing about these hardware base is that you can actually remove them. It's a bit tight and sits. Uh, let me grab my screwdriver just to demonstrate if I can find it. There we go. It's a bit tight uh, since it came straight from the factory, but let me demonstrate what it looks like. And here is the handle. Of course, you can't remove this bottom one uh, from the middle without removing the locks for the bottom since uh, it'll be blocking the way. Let me see if these are the only screws I need to remove in order to do that. That's four screws. And something is blocking, so let's see if I am missing something, some screw that I forgot to remove. Um, I think it's in the rear. Let's try to remove the bottom one. Here we're removing the two screws. There we go. You can remove either the bottom or the top. Remove the bottom here. Try to place it back and just remove the top. Let's see if it. Uh... I 
uh, IC because the fan is actually plugged into the back. So that's why it's not moving. But uh, you can actually do that. You can independently move, either remove the middle or the bottom depending on your setup. But here at the bottom, you can keep that top, remove the bottom, and remove this one as well. But this one does not have thumb screws. You need to re really use your screwdrivers in here to re remove this plate. And you can mount your 240 millimeter radiator here at the bottom. Also, as you've seen, when you remove the front bezel, you can install an additional fan in here for intake. There's plenty of fan options. And uh, these are, the, of course, the uh, five and a quarter inch locks. We've seen this before, and starting, I believe they started implementing this in NZX H2. And the, the weird thing about it is that it locks here in the, in the rear instead of the front. So if you probably have a like a half height five and a quarter inch, or not not a half height, but a half length five and a quarter inch device, like a front front bay controller, it doesn't reach all the way in the back. You can uh, you can't use these locks, but the the convenient thing is that you can actually just remove them completely. I removed them before. There you go. They're quite easy to remove, and then you can just use your screws that they provide anyway to lock it in place. There's plenty of options. And there's there's these. Uh, I see this in the front end the H2 as well. They have these extra, they provide these extra thumb screws that uh, they don't really do any function here. They don't hold anything here on the side not that I know of. But uh, of course, if you do that, you can just use it to lock your peripherals, for example. Whereas they, they call it the thumb screw bandolier. There you go. And the top here as well, you can remove it if you want to um, have a triple radiator setup. You don't want a long radiator in here, maybe up to. Uh, we've seen, we talked to Shin, who de designed the Ezeki Switch A10 uh, TS, and he mentioned uh, the, they actually, in the demonstration, they showed a 65 millimeter radiator in push pull configuration, and they removed the, this top area right here. But you have to remove, uh, you have to remove the screw here and screw here at the front as well, and the screw here in the top. There's plenty of screws to remove, one, two, three, four, and there's more in the back here in the side, and you have to reroute the cables. But uh, of course, we're, I'm not, I'm not going to show it. Uh, we, we have a previous review of our Switch A10 that shows you how to install your uh, install your water cooling setup. Uh, for now, we'll focus on our regular install with the regular uh, air cooler. I'll demonstrate later in our installation video. But if you want to check how how to install your water cooling setup, check out our previous review done by Stephen. Uh, you can click on HighTechVision.com and just search in our channel for that Switch A10 review. And just put this back. I'll show you how easy it is to put that back again. And uh, some more features I will um, I've overlooked the hot swap. I'm going to show you later. Uh, I'm going to take out the camera from the tripod and take a closer look for that for you. And here you have nine PCIe slots, and they, they're actually removable. And they use thumb screws to secure it. That's convenient, and that pretty much covers it. It's plenty of space here. Throughout it, as I mentioned, 65 meters plus push pull, so that's plenty of room. Is if especially if you're not running a radio on top. And uh, let's take a look at the hot swap uh, bed here on the front, so I can uh, and show you what it looks like. We've shown you what it looks like from the front, so we'll show you what it looks like from the rear. All right, so this is what it looks like as a regular SATA connector, but the connector is for the power is actually a four-pin Molex connector. In the power supply mounting area, you can see that there are these feet that elevate it, and the tip of them, they have uh, these, I think there's, these are rubber, that kind of uh, hold it in place and give it enough elevation to, uh, in addition to the one provided at the bottom, to gather enough air. As you can see, it's just, it supports the standard ATX form factor uh, power supply, and also supports a longer power supply, and the cable routing area right beside it for convenience. At the top rear area, we find the 140 millimeter exhaust fan. This is installed in such a way that we have seen before. This is the uh, we have seen it in the Tempest 210 case on the side. Uh, NZXT has a an adjustable fan mounting area there for your extra GPU coolings. So that's uh, so they've incorporated that design here at the rear of the Switch A10 so that it provides an optional adjustable clearance height. If you want here at the, at the bottom is the default position, so you have enough clearance for your radiator when you mount it on top, or you can move just move it upward, or depending on your position, you can also install a 120 millimeter fan, or a different, or uh, move it upward and uh, move it to the middle. 
Uh, it's very convenient. Gives you plenty of options to choose from, not just uh, the default position. Here at the bottom rear, you can find the PCI expansion slots. There are nine in total. They're uh, perforated for airflow. And beside them, you have four very large uh, pre grommeted holes for your water cooling hoses. And at the bottom, of course, the power supply is mounted that way. And underneath here, you can pull out a dust filter. See there, similar to the front dust filter. It is locked in place just by pressing it and uh, pressing it again to unlock it. We have finished covering the features of the NZXC Switch A10. We should now proceed to the installation video. And uh, thanks for watching. You can subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash hightechlegion. See more videos to update daily. And also you can leave comments below or in our forums at hightechlegion.com. Also contact us at Facebook, facebook.com, HL Reviews, type in there, search bar, or just go to High Tech Legion at, high, at uh, Facebook, you'll also find us there. And uh, again, thanks for watching, and we can now proceed to our component installation video and proceed with that tutorial.